Hey, what is Hikers? Welcome to the Nida Borg in Colbert. Which is a case study in how to piss the Archbishop off. We'll learn you how. The year is 1190. Cobern is already home to the Oberburg castle high up on the hill above the town. You can see what remains of the keep and chapel in some of these shots. Its owner was Gerlach I of Cobern Isenburg. He was an imperial knight, which meant he didn't answer to some local lord, but was placed under direct authority of the Holy Roman Emperor himself. This privilege is known as imperial immediacy. Gerlach wasn't satisfied with the Oberburg anymore. The castle was outdated to actually provide a good defense. Because of this, he decides to build a new castle a little lower along the ridge of the hill, the Niederburg. The fortress employed all the latest standards of castle construction at the time. The castle is built along an almond-shaped floor plan. We first enter the area between the outer wall and the inner curtain wall. Along the outer wall, one of the towers remains in a good state of preservation. This area between the two walls is known as a Zwinge in German. If attackers manage to get past the outer wall, known as a Zwinge Mauer, they would be surrounded by both walls and be an easy target for defenders on the main curtain wall. From the Zwinge we enter the main castle and the palace, which was the home of the Lord. The remains of this two-story late Gothic building are impressive, with many of the windows still visible, as well as this vaulted cellar. From here we can follow the reconstructed stairs up to the main castle. Gerlach made a small miscalculation when building this castle, however. Maybe he believed he could do whatever he wanted as an imperial knight. But everybody knows that before you build a castle, you should probably get approval from the person who owned the land. This was Archbishop Johann of Trier, and he was a little impressed by this not particularly modest display of force. He besieged the castle in 1195 and managed to lure Gerlach out with a ruse and to capture him. In defeat, Gerlach was further humiliated by having not only the Niederburg but also the Oberburg expropriated by the Archbishop. He was also stripped of his imperial immediacy privileges. The Archbishop returned the Niederburg and Oberburg to Gerlach, but this time not as an imperial knight, but as a vassal to the Archbishop. This ironic tale sounds like rubbing salt into an already painful wound.
The keep or Bergfried is well preserved, though it must be said that the upper third and the battlements were reconstructed during the 19th century. As you can see from these drone shots, we are joined again by our friend Orca FPV. He has two great videos on this castle. If you can't get enough, we highly recommend giving both videos a watch after this one. You can find links in the description. Nederburg was owned by the descendants of Gerlach throughout the centuries. Its final demise was during the Nine Years' War, when French troops demolished most of this proud fortress. What remains is a ruin steeped in history and a tale of why you should never piss off the Archbishop. Time for the arbitrary selective castle score. I'm gonna say an 8. Yeah, it's kind of big, but yeah, in the end, you can't even access the back feet, so yeah. I'm think? going to say also an 8, but because of positive reasons. I mean, have you seen the stairs and the vaulted nice cellar? Stairs. Both are very nice. Leave your own score in the comments, we'd like to hear it. And otherwise, like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of castles. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.